are gone to their eternal rest. May the ceremonies of today deepen our reverence for our departed friends and comrades. Let us renew our pledge of loyalty to our country. Ready. Hey. Fire. Hey. Fire. Hey. Fire. Joining us on a beautiful Monday Memorial Day. Um, what I'd like to do now, if I can introduce the, the scouts, the leaders in the Pledge of Allegiance. marching band play the national anthem please thank you
Thank you. Comrades, this day is sacred with the almost visible presence of those who have gone before us. We honor the memory of those who gave their lives in the service of our country and of those others who have dropped their burdens by the wayside of life and have gone to their eternal rest. May the ceremonies of today deepen our reverences for our departed friends and comrades. Let us renew our pledge of loyalty to our country and its flag. Let us resolve by word and deed to emphasize the privilege and duty of patriotism. Thank you. And cover. Let us pray, Almighty God, giver of all victories, we thank thee for the opportunities which abide in our land, for thy guidance in the hour of peril, thy tender love in times of need. Help us to remember with reverence the valor and devotion of our departed comrades. Not only thee, those whose bodies consecrate our country soil, but also those who sleep beyond the seas, and others whose resting places will not be ever cherished. The ideals for which they fought. Keep us steadfast in the cause of human rights and liberties, of law and order and true Americanism. Give us the power to see and the will to do right. Grant that the American Legion may preserve the high ideals for which our comrades died. May they mercifully blessings rest upon those they left behind. Keep us forever firm in righteousness, humble of heart, and unselfish in purpose. Amen. I'd also like to have still a moment of silence. We have in the past year, post 34, 16 comrades from the local area here who have gone to their maker. I'd like to read those names. Albert Olmsted, Jr. Alan Cann. Arthur McCusker. Douglas Pika. Harold Williams. James Cova, James Murphy, Josephine Darby, Leo LaCroix, Marcel Plant, Robert Ray, Robert Derry Sr., Robert Loeffler, Ronald Tuck, Timothy Coughlin, William Nelson, Baradine Fitzgerald. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the uh, Thimbleane High School Marching Band uh, for joining us today. They they had to leave the attending another Memorial Day service. Um, next, uh, we have a few poem readings. I'd like to introduce Aston Fairchild from Girl Scout Troop 59134. We will remember the brave soldiers. We know they're with us today. We know they have not forgotten the earth through the long years they've been away. In their hearts fit there bloomed a flower, love of all mankind. And when they left us one thing they did not leave behind. They have our loves and we have theirs. 
so with reverence we pray for the dear ones who left us and yet are with us this new Memorial Day. Thank you, Austin. Honor God, salute our fallen comrades. In Flanders Fields by John McCray. In Flanders Fields the poppies flow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing, hands we throw. The torch be yours, so hold it tight. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies glow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Matthew. Next side, I'd like to invite up Raiden Michelle from Boy Scouts of Binky. Dip the Colors by Lenore Hunter. We dip the colors in honor today of the soldiers who said goodbye and marched away to defend their land beneath a foreign sky. We dip the colors to those who have struggled under native sun and did not cease the strife of warfare until battle was won. To all the soldiers who sleep today, who rest beneath the sun, we dip the colors and say a prayer and leave them to their God. Thank you, Braden. Um, next, I'd like to invite up Norman Major, our retired uh, New Hampshire State Representative. I remember as a young boy in King, New Hampshire, my father would always bring us to our town's annual Memorial Day Parade ceremony. The Memorial Day Parade in the late, late 1930s, he pointed out that the old gentlemen that were proudly marching with their uniforms and medals were the few veterans left that fought during the Civil War to keep our nation united and free of slaves. These older soldiers who fought between 1861 and 1865 we're there to remember the more than 600,000 soldiers that died in that war. 
My father also pointed out a second group of veterans, about 35 years younger than the Spanish War, Civil War veterans, who participated in the Spanish-American War, initiated by the sinking of the U.S. battleship Maine. These veterans wanted to remember the 2,500 soldiers that gave their lives for our country in that war. My father also pointed out that a third group of veterans, about 20 years younger than the Civil War, than the Spanish-American War veterans, which served in the First World War, a war to end all wars. These veterans wanted to remember that more than 115,000 comrades who had given their lives to protect our freedoms. While I was a while I was still a boy at seven, America entered World War II. America was fighting for a survival with more than 13 million men and women in uniform and more than this in the home front supporting the war effort. More than 400,000 men and women gave their lives during World War II and more than 73,000 still were unaccounted for. My father continued to bring us to the Memorial Day Parade every year so we wouldn't forget the heroes who gave their lives and those whose names have never been accounted for. I look out across this town green gathering and see so many parents and grandparents with their young children, which pleases me. As my father had done for me and my siblings, I surmise that you too are pointing out the heroes amongst us who continue to wear the military uniform as a way to remember their fallen comrades. You might be pointing out a few World War II veterans in attendance, or the Korean War veterans who fought between 1950 and 1953, after the North Koreans crossed the 38th parallel and invaded South Korea. Almost 40,000 Americans died in action in Korea, and more than 7,000 POWs are still unaccounted for. You can also point out the Vietnam War veterans from a war which lasted from 1961 to 1975. In that conflict, nearly 60,000 Americans gave their lives in support of South Vietnam, and over 1,600 POWs are still missing in action. Finally, you can point out the veterans who fought in the Gulf War, 1990 to 1991 and the War on Terror, which has been in operation since that fateful day on September 11, 2001, when terrorists crashed commercial airlines into the Twin Towers of New York City, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and into a field in western Pennsylvania. More than 7,000 American troops have been killed, and others are still missing in action. All of these fallen heroes earn our deepest gratitude. All these brave men and women from all these wars believed in their mission and that they were helping to make the world a safer place for all our families. They have paid the highest price for our freedom. This morning we honor all these brave servicemen and women that have given their last full measure of devotion to our country for the freedoms we cherish. This morning, we as parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, have the responsibility to continue instilling the importance of Memorial Day to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and in my case, our great-great-grandchild. Child. That we honor all the Americans that have given their last full measure of devotion to our country. We must remember each death has caused their families and friends much pain. We must remember each death has contributed to our lives, preserved our freedoms, and nourished the spirit of the greatest nation on earth. We must remember freedom is not free. 
God bless the men and women who have died defending the USA. I thank all of you coming out today, and I salute all these brave men and women. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Um, next, I'd like to invite up Bob Walhoff, State Representative. Thank you, Bill. Thanks to all of you who took the time today to be with us at this ceremony to honor those that fell for our country. I'd like to start with a few words from 1984 at Arlington Cemetery by then-President Ronald Reagan that I think sums up why we're all here. My fellow Americans, Memorial Day is a day of ceremonies and speeches. Throughout America today, we honor the dead of our wars. We recall their valor and their sacrifice. We remember they gave their lives so that we might live and be free. As I searched the net and tried to find something new to talk about today, uh, I was amazed. I, I found out that in 1950, during the time of President Eisenhower, who you know was our Supreme Allied Commander during World War II, Congress voted to make this day a day of prayer for peace. This is the 73rd anniversary of that Memorial Day, a day for peace. Every year, the presidents of our United States makes a proclamation as mandated by the Congress. For this day, a day to pray, pray for peace. I'd like to read a few of the words of President Biden's message that was printed for today. On Memorial Day, we honor America's beloved daughters and sons who gave their last full measure of devotion to this nation. We can never fully repay the debt we owe those fallen heroes. But today, we vow to rededicate ourselves to the work for which they gave their lives. And we recommit to supporting the families, caregivers, and survivors they left behind. For generations, Stretching back to the formation of our country, these courageous people answered duty's call, willing to give their lives for that which we all hold dear. They fought for our independence. They defended our democracy. They sacrificed for our freedom. And today, as they lie in eternal peace, we continue to live by the light of liberty that they so bravely kept burning bright around the world. He goes on to say, in honor and recognition of these fallen service members, by a joint resolution of Congress in 1950, it has requested the President issue a proclamation calling on the people of the United States to observe each Memorial Day as a day of prayer for permanent peace and designating a period on that day when the people of the United States might unite in prayer. Therefore, I, President of the United States, who hereby proclaim Memorial Day, May 29th, 2023, is a day of prayer for permanent peace. And I designate the hour beginning in each locality at 11 a.m. of that day at a time when people might unite in prayer and reflection. I ask all Americans to observe this national moment of remembrance. I'd like us to take one moment as the President asks maybe say your own private prayer in the spirit of your heart for all those that have served and sacrificed, the ultimate sacrifice, gave their life for our country, for us, for our communities, and our freedom. A moment of silence for all the fallen brethren. Thank you. I hope that today you'll take time after this ceremony to walk around our town green. As I mentioned, there's plenty of memorials here, probably too many, for those that have served and sacrificed. Take that moment to say your prayer for those you might recall, for those you might remember, for the loss that you suffered, 
and for the freedom that we all enjoy today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Um, next, uh, Daryl Green from the Russell uh, Board Selection. Three minutes. Just three minutes a week is all I'll ask you to remember our fallen heroes. More is better, but at least three minutes. Three minutes can be at lunch, walking the dog, or even a moment in silence at the dinner table with your family. I fear we don't take the three minutes at least once a week, if not more, our next generation will not understand the sacrifices over the life of our country. I ask the three 20-somethings that this holiday met, and the answers were more than astonishing. I, it was a three-day weekend. I don't blame them. This was an open camp. Open, uh, go to open the camp, go to the beach, or to have a cookout. That's what a lot of them had thought this day was. We need to get back to the true meaning of this holiday. Maybe the way to do this is to take three minutes with our family each week and think about the heroes and their families that made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. God bless our heroes. God bless our town and the state, and God bless each United States of America. Thank you, Daryl. I'll invite you to stand, if able, with a great appreciation for our town, for those who serve it, for all those in attendance. Today, would you join me in prayer? Creator God, we thank you for your grace and mercy, and we thank you for this nation. On this day, we remember those who have lost their lives in combat, conflict, and service. O oh Lord, we weep with those who weep, and we mourn with those who mourn. Comfort these moms and dads, children and spouses, neighbors and friends, as only you can. Help them feel your strong presence See your tender hand all around them and hear your voice directing them in these dark circumstances. Draw them daily to your word to process their pain and grieve with hope. Spur us to be your hands and feet and to meet their practical needs. In the silence of our own hearts, God, hear us as we remember the names and lives of our family and friends lost on service, in service to our nation. Thank you, Lord, that you're the defender of widows and father to the fatherless. Bind up their wounds and heal their broken hearts. You are good, and we pray that even in their pain, they will see your goodness sustaining them through seasons of grief. Restore to them the joy of your salvation and sing over them a new song. In your name we pray. Amen. That will conclude the, the ceremony for today. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out on this beautiful Memorial Day. The weather's great. I'd like to thank everyone who participated. A big thank you all to Beth Foster for organizing and putting this together. And before we leave, let's really truly remember what this day really is about and everyone who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And let's not forget that. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.